It's hard to think about when other things take priority in our lives. When our faiths are relegated to Sunday morning faith. When our faith does not extend into the week. When other things crop up. Well, James also responds to this. As a body without the spirit is dead. So faith without deeds is dead. If we live each day as the world lives, if we live each day as non-Christians live, what message are we sending to the world? Are we joining Nietzsche and saying, God is dead? What message does your life proclaim? Admittedly, sometimes my life does not proclaim God in my life. Admittedly, sometimes even as the pastor of this congregation, I sin. And I break God's law. Sometimes I do stupid things. Get frustrated while I'm driving. One of my favorite examples. Disagree with my wife over something. Indulge myself and eat more than I should. Those may not be your problems. But all of us have sins in our lives, things in our lives that at times we prioritize instead of God. And maybe it's not something that we mean for it to take priority in front of God. Maybe it's something that just is so pressing that we have to make sure we take care of it. Our health. Putting food on the table, taking care of the children, getting them to and from soccer practice, grandparents, checking on your grandkids, looking after them. See, Satan will take these things in our lives. These things that we can do that are a blessing for others, that God can carry out through us, and he'll twist them. He'll twist them so that instead of being service to God, their service to us. Well, thankfully, Nietzsche was wrong. Christ may have died, but he is not dead. Christ may have died, but his death was not the end for him. When Christ died, when Christ took up his cross, he lived a perfect life. He walked each step, each day perfectly. He never made a mistake, even when Satan tempted him in the desert. His body, his spirit, his mind attacking him. He never gave in. And he carried his cross. And he carried his cross on those steps to Calvary. Each of those trudging those ways, facing the rejection of his close friends. Carrying that cross until he was crucified upon it. Crucified upon it for us sinners. Crucified upon it for all the errors we make in our life. Crucified upon it because of our failure to take up our cross and follow him. Crucified upon it because God loves us more than we can imagine. When Christ was crucified, he died. He paid the price for our sins. As we know so well, the story did not end there. On the third day, he rose again. He did not remain dead, but remained alive and well. Christ remains alive and well in our world today. And that is a miracle, not just for him, but a miracle for each of us. Because through that resurrection, through Christ being raised from the dead, He won for us victory over sin, death, and the devil. He won for us victory so that we need not worry about our sinful lives, our lives that have broken God's law over and again, over and over again. Christ is not dead, but alive. And that message, that message is the one of Easter. That message is the one of our eventual Easter when we rise again with Christ in heaven. Boy, we look forward to that day. We look forward to that day, that day of the resurrection. 
certainly in this life, we'll make mistakes. We will sin and break God's law. But that forgiveness, that forgiveness that Christ offers is for sinners. It's for each of us who have broken God's law. I don't know if Paul could have said it any more beautifully than he says it in Romans chapter 5. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But we were still ungodly, worthless to the world. We were worth something to God. Out of his great love, he made us his sons and daughters. Out of his great love, he redeemed us. And out of his great love, he showed us that he is alive. Christ has arisen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. And that message, that message is not just meant for Easter Sunday. See, that message is meant for every single day of a Christian's life. That message is meant for us to share with others. Our faith isn't meant only for Sunday mornings. What a dreary life it would be if it was. What good would you say if all your faith was was Sunday morning? Is that really what God is? A Sunday morning God? No. See, God cares about us each and every day. He's with us each and every day. And He gives us so many opportunities to share our faith, to live out our faith. You know, one of the wonderful things He allows for us to do is to give forgiveness. Many of us have things that have gone on in our families, that have happened in our families, and we can offer forgiveness. That proclaims that Christ is alive in us. Every day, we have to interact with other people, whether it's a doctor or a nurse or uh, the checker at the grocery store, the person checking us out when we're buying parts to fix a broken water heater. Each of those, each of those opportunities, God gives us to share that message that Christ is alive. Nietzsche may have said, God is dead. But Nietzsche was mistaken. God is not dead. He is alive. He is well. And He is working in the hearts of His children. He is working in each of our hearts. So that not only will we, in our actions, share God's Word, but in our words. How will they hear if we don't tell them? How will they hear if our faith stays here on Sunday morning, how glorious it will be when they hear. When we say Christ is alive. Christ has arisen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do thank you for rising. We thank you for coming back from the dead. We thank you that you have lived in each of our hearts. Lord, we are nothing. We are sinners. We are ungodly. With your resurrection, with your salvation, we, we have life to look forward to. Not life on this earth, but life forever with you in heaven. Lord, may this word not stay here in our church, but may this word go out. May it not stop here, but may it go forth to the ends of the earth. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us when we bottle it up and we don't take up our cross to follow you when we drop it. But Lord, give us the joy. Give us the joy to share your gospel, to go all the way for you, to not go halfway, but to be your disciples. In your name we pray. Amen.